Okay, so hello, my name is Hong King. I'm from SP Digital. So uh, today's talk will be a quick uh, intro about CSS modules. I mean, how many of you have heard of CSS modules? Like quite a lot, right? Yeah. So I recently went into using CSS modules uh, for React JS. Yeah, it's okay lah. Talking about React in the okay lah, whatever. Yeah. So, uh, so just just a basic uh, what is what is a CSS module? So it's a very basic concept. So, uh, in normal button dot CSS, right? You just you declare something like uh, base and normal and disable. So in your React component, you uh, import styles from CSS button dot CSS. So this styles, right? Actually, is like a key value that returns the base normal disable. Then you just pass in and just do like button custom. Your custom will be that style dot whatever that you pass in. Then when you compile it using your webpack, you will be some gibberish. Actually, this gibberish you can define in your webpack about how you want to hash your your values and things like that. So this is all we know about CSS modules. But apparently, there's actually more about CSS modules that I uh, discovered. So uh, this property called compose. Like, have you heard of compose? Like, using do you use compose? Yeah, but apparently compose is a very powerful feature. So if you know your if you know use CSS, right, you know extend. Extend tends to let's say you extend a base, then your base actually is included inside the maybe normal your buttons. But for this case it's not. So let's say if you have a button with base styles, right, you don't want to then you you don't want to ah replicate this code over and over again. So you just put it in base, then you use this compose dash dash h um, colon base then you write the whatever normal button you want to be then uh, in the final code right what happens is uh, it will include the normal style and also have a class of the button base so actually it's not exactly a class that is like uh, sort of like replicated so it actually is sort of like your, your CSS will be smaller so it's sort of Save your CSS space, save because I think if you are very concerned about your size of your CSS payload, right? This will be a, a huge uh, advantage, lah. So this is the, the 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 one of the powerful feature of compose. So apparently, compose you can also have multiple compose. So in my example, I only have one, but apparently you can like uh, import other classes. Like you can do import uh, compose uh, with and a class of a NAR file. So actually, it's possible to do that. Then they will just keep concatenating a lot of class. So your, your last compile will have a lot, a, lot, a lot of these kind of things. But if nobody, your user won't, won't care about your DOM, so actually, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So another feature also is the global and local. So let's say uh, you don't want to have the compile class, right? Because if, let's say you have done your compile the class gibberish. But what if you, at that time, I also want to, I want to write. Uh, write my class name. I don't want to gibberish it. So you use something called colon global inside the class uh, button dot CSS. Then you just put it there. Then you you won't actually sort of like jumble up your class names. Then another one is local. Local is basically it's actually the same lah. It's the same kind of syntax. But uh, another um, one one thing is that you can actually mix them together. So let's say it gets more fun, let's say if you mix them together. It works very similarly like your class, but you can actually sort of like have multiple global, local kind of thing. So it sort of like lets you have more power. Let's say, uh, for example, I die die want to have my label global to not be Jewish, but I just want it to be there. But I just want my CSS to be local or something like that. There are actually cases you might need this, uh. so it, it work. It can it can work. So for example, uh, in the, in my next slide I'll talk about it. So let's say for so for CSS modules, right? Um, naming convention is prefer camel case rather than dash, and yeah. So can you use it with other kind of CSS systems? Actually, yes, you can use it. Uh, oh no, yes, you can use it. Because let's say if you want to try out, uh, you have uh, libraries. Actually, we have an internal library that is written in CSS. Then I want to try use CSS modules. But the language are different, right? 
Yes, 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 yes. Is, is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Can, can, can. Just that you have to be, your paper has to work a bit harder. La. So you have to write a bit more code to actually enable you to make this work. A bit of a bummer, but no choice. But yeah, we want to use like shiny things. and mm. So uh, it's possible. So let's say if you're using like, things like Bootstrap or some kind of uh, libraries that you want to use, right? But you still, you still still want your local kind of like uh, nice componentized, but you don't want the global kind of style. So you can do something like that. So you sort of like say that, oh, for my classes that I write, I just enable the modules. Then for those I don't want like global style sheet, I just disable it. If you don't do that, I think you'll get a weird case where your global style sheet get the jumper classes. So a bit not so nice, yeah. So let's say global style sheet example, uh, I include a Zendesk. CSS button, so uh, then in your button class, you just say in your component, you can do something like this. Uh, C button, button primary, then you can just make a match. So it works out quite well if, if you need to use a global style sheet. Yeah. So it says it's the same, uh, it's the same, just that you use CSS syntax. Uh, yeah. So quite easy to understand. Yeah. So overrides, is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. Overwrite your. Sometimes you need to do it because uh, maybe design changes or yeah, some special cases you have to do this. So it actually works. So. Mm, which one? Oh, actually, that here this K is based on the Zendesk. So this example is the same. So let's say. Oh, so the Zendesk CSS form has C dash CK. So that is the global uh, name. So if let's say there's a trick to say that you're not to like the CSS module to jump out your cursor is to just define it as a string. Then all they care about is a style label. Then they will jump out their class. Yeah. So that is the thing. You overrides. Yeah, quite good. It's end of my talk. Sweet. Yes, thank you. So any questions, you can just find me on Twitter. Thank you. Thank you.